All right, guys, back here. As I just posted a, a picture on Instagram saying about the double leg that I did against Rodolfo Vieira. At the time, it was the most important uh, fight of my career. But I'm not gonna talk about the whole fight right now because uh, that's a lot of to say about the fight itself. Now I'm just gonna talk about the double leg and the connection because that's one thing that really changed the result of the fight and changed pretty much my, my whole career, right? But now the focus is gonna be to talk about the double leg. At the time I remember uh, Rodolfo was killing everyone pretty much and uh, I lost for him in the year before. And of course I knew would be really hard, uh, uh, the toughest fight of the tournament for sure. And I knew it would be really hard to take him down because Rodolfo has one of, one of the best judo in the sport. So it was really hard for me to deal with that. And during the scramble, I remember he was passing my guard and I swept him and up on top. And then when he started playing spider guard, I broke his grips. And then he st I gave too much space and he stood up. Of course, makes things even harder for me because I knew it would be really hard to take him down. So that's why I came up with this one. A lot of people ask me, how I have this double leg, the single leg really good with the wrestling style. But actually this one is the one that I train the most and of course you guys can see that work really well. And it's simple. You just need to do the right setup and understand the right timing to do that, right? So today I have a special guest here, David Moura, right? The, for sure we're gonna be him uh, representing Brazil in the Olympic Games. So. It's gonna be great and not, not better than him to be like sharing these techniques stand up. Of course, I'm gonna show one now, but he's gonna talk, uh, teach us a little bit too. So when I did with him, after the scramble, we stood up and we had the same grips, right? So of course, uh, we, he, he, actually he had the, the same grip as me, so he had the lapel and the arm. So it was the perfect timing that I, I saw to have the position. Of course, I always, I rather against like tough guys to do the wrestling than the judo because they they everyone has like a better judo than me so that's why I rather wrestling. But in that situation we both had grips, so I couldn't like get out and try to shoot. That was like my my best game. So what I did on that situation was like a really basic setup, but worked really well. When I had these grips, what I did it's not just about to shoot. But the idea is to open the space. You see how I open his arm and I open his lapel. And at, at the same time when I open, I drag myself in. So I bring my knees down. So imagine that you try to put your knees really close to his feet, right? Of course, so look, we, we both stay in here. So I open, but at the same time I drop. You see how close I get? After I get here, of course, you try to get behind this knee, don't try to get too high, otherwise he can sprawl. Right, I'm supposed to So then it's gonna be hard, but as soon as you land here, you grab behind, because here you're gonna start driving forward and taking him down, right? Of course, during the match, I didn't land right on the close guard, on close guard because his knee was a little bit uh, out of angle, so I took him down, and right away, I try to connect with a holding pass, right? Because that's what I say all the time. It's not just about to do, do one technique. Because nowadays, I see Jiu Jitsu is really rich in fancy moves, but really poor in connections. So that's one thing that I always try to do. Because the time he was trying to stand up and get out, of course, because here I need like three seconds to establish the position. If I just fight here to establish the position, he's gonna try to stand up, and maybe I lose the situation, right? So a lot of times, when I take him down and start connecting with a pass, so now he's not really worried about standing up. He just start defending the pass to push me. So I did two things. I established the position and then I start setting up something around, so I'm making him worry. If he's worried about my pass, he's not thinking about the pass. He's not thinking about standing up and avoid the take down. So I am one step ahead of him. Right? So that's why it's not just about doing one technique itself, it's about doing the connection. So Jiu Jitsu 
It's only one thing. So you get the take down, you connect with the pass, go into the cycle throw and going straight to the submission, right? So that's why, that's why I like to say this connection is everything, right? So, but let's do the technique again. Like I said, make sure that you open, right? Lapel and arm, and at the same time, you pull yourself in, right? So look. At the same time, you let go. Even that, look, pay attention to my feet here. My feet are alive, so my toes on the mat, I don't stay like that. Because if you stay like that, you have no drive. It's hard to push. So when I land like this, I'm gonna touch his knees, right? And now I drive forward. So make sure that you take your knee out of the mat and use your shoulders to push his hip and pull the legs to you. So then you're gonna end up in a good position, right? So right away, of course, I got in the half bar, but in that situation, I got his knees, so I try to connect with a folding pass right away, right? So it's a simple deal to do. Instead of you do the home move, you can start just doing the, the beginning part, right? So. You see how close I get? After you get here, it's gonna be really easy. Make sure that you don't go too low. Drive and start walking. That was exactly just like I did in the fight. And like I said, was the most important fight of my career at the time and worked really well and that changed the result of the fight and in my favor and I got the win because of the takedown in the end, right? So that was my idea about the takedown and about the connecting, so I hope you guys like it, right?